Hey everybody, this is Bob KK4DIV. I'm glad you decided to stop in and join me today because we're going to get started on this 10 meter dipole project. Alright everybody, I've got some basic plans drawn up here and I'm going to be using this 3 inch flat steel. I'm going to cut it into a 3 by 5 piece. And I also have these 3 8 inch by 24 threaded uh, studs. Uh, one has an SO239 connector and the other is just a uh, bolt mount. And we're going to put these on this flat steel. I also have a couple of U-bolts, uh, two-inch U-bolts, and what I'm going to do with the U-bolts is actually mount that onto a pole so I can rotate the antenna. Pretty simple design, but uh, I think this may work out to be a pretty decent dipole antenna. We'll just have to see how everything works out. All right, the first thing I want to do is mark this uh, piece of flat steel at five inches so we can make our cut, and I'm just going to use a sharpie there to mark at five and then we're going to take our square here and draw a line across it like so double check the measurements yep yep looks good Oh man, that's nice. Is it hot? No, nah, not hot. All right, cool. All right, first step done. Now, what we've got to do is I need to measure and get all the hole placement uh, done for this uh, little piece of metal so I can drill all the holes needed for the different parts that will be attached to that plate. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my lines marked here. I'm gonna put holes here. Uh, those are gonna be for the U-bolts. And then holes right here, those are going to be for the studs to mount the antenna elements. All right, so I'm gonna be using the drill press to drill the holes and to keep the drill bit from walking all over the flat steel surface. Uh, somebody a while back uh, was watching my other video I made when I was making my log periodic uh, elk clone antenna for satellite work. Uh, they said if I would have used a punch and kind of notched a, uh, a, an indention where the uh, holes are going to be, it'll keep, help keep the drill bit from walking. See, I learn something every time I do these projects from y'all, so I appreciate it. So we got a punch here, and I'm going to see if I can't do this and put a little indention in the steel. It did. Yep, and then I'm going to do my other holes. Okay, there we go. All right, since I don't have a proper drill press vise, uh, what I've got is a C-clamp holding this piece of flat steel here. I think that will work fine. And I've got my drill bit loaded up in here. I'm going to shed some light on this situation. If I plug this in, there we go. So, let's make this happen. First hole. Oh, 
Almost forgot. Safety first. First hole. See how that's going to work? A little tight. Might want to go to a Nick size up on this drill bit. I thought it was going to be the right size, but apparently I was wrong. How hot is that? Not hot. Seems about right. All right, here we go. That didn't take much. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Tell you what, a proper drill press vise would be fantastic right now. I almost bought one the other day. Obviously, I didn't. All right, so I've got all the holes drilled on this plate. I used a 2564 uh, drill bit to drill the holes in this plate. Um, all the holes for the, the U-bolt, as well as the, I guess you could call them the, the, the holes for the, whatever these are, the antenna, actual antenna connectors, the studs for those antennas. I'm going to have to drill one hole on this plate for the stud a little bit larger because the one that has the SO239 connector, I need to ensure that that center pin stays isolated from this plate. The outer shield of the SO239 uh, coax will be in contact with the plate and the stud on the other side will act as the counterpoise. So I got to make sure one is isolated and the other is not for this dipole to work correctly. All right, so we've got a larger drill bit in here. Uh, the largest drill bit I have, it's one half inch is what's in there now and that should be enough to drill this hole out so that these little plastic washers will help isolate that side of the antenna. So here we go, last hole. Okay. Oh, that's gonna work perfectly. Those washers fit down into that hole perfectly. All right. This antenna plate or this mounting plate is about ready to be assembled. So one side is just going to have a simple stud. Like I said, it's going to be in contact with the plate like so. And the other stud has to be isolated. So let's get this isolation bit taken care of. All right, folks, so that's what the a uh, plate looks like when it's assembled. This is kind of, you know, this is exactly how I pictured it in my head. What we have here is the coax will come into one side of this plate. Uh, it is isolated, the center pin is isolated. You'll have one element coming this way. The outer shield of the coax is attached to the plate and then 
through the plate to the other element will go this way. This uh, center pin is not isolated from the plate. So it effectively becomes a dipole antenna. Got a couple U-bolts to attach it to a, a metal pole or any kind of pole that you would like to attach it to. I'm thinking about attaching it in a manner that I can make it, um, I can rotate it if I need to. All right, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into my video today. I really appreciate each and every one of you joining me on this project. I hope it has been maybe an inspiration to you. Remember, if there's something that you see in this video that maybe I could have done a little bit better, if you have some tips or tricks, remember, leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers. Thank you to my Patreon viewers. If you're not a Patreon viewer, please think about going over to my Patreon page and donating. It's just a dollar a month to keep uh, these projects funded and for me to be able to bring new products to the channel. Uh, so at this time, we'll go ahead and end the video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching again. 73, until next time, this is Bob, KK4DIV.